Hello, and welcome to the Gerard Manley Hopkins podcast. I'm Lance Pearson. This podcast is made up of two separate recordings of Hopkins' poems, one of which was a live show. For more information about this, please listen to episode one, where you can also find out how to get your hands on the program for each show. Contact me at lance at lancepearson.org. And if you live in the UK and would like to know more about the Hopkins Society, go to hopkinssociety.co.uk for more information. The next one in your booklet, Inversnade, is another enjoyment of nature as God has made it by way of contrast with the mess humankind has made of cities. At this time, Hopkins was working as a parish priest in Glasgow, and he came out for a few hours, not even a day trip, to Loch Lomond. And Inversnaid is an area on the eastern shore of the lake with a stream running into it, and that's what the poem describes. And for a moment, we'll look at the words before coming back to the screen. The first two verses picture the brook itself, the third verse, its banks. And you can see from the explanations I've had to give in the footnotes that Hopkins is swept up in trying to match the pace of the current. He compresses words together so that we either swirl along in the general drift or we have to stop the camera while we work them out. And where he can't find a word to match what he's trying to say, he makes up one of his own. And then he stops, and in the fourth verse, he prays in a sort of incantation for natural beauty spots like this to be preserved. There's nothing strange in that idea today, but in 1881, when the world was opening up to the steam engine and the blast furnace, Hopkins was a lone prophetic voice in the wilderness and the wet. This darksome burn, horseback brown, his roll rock high road roaring down, in coop and in comb, the fleece of his foam flutes, and low to the lake falls home. A wind puff bonnet of fawn froth turns and twindles over the broth of a pool so pitch black, fell frowning, it rounds and rounds despair to drowning. Degged with dew, dappled with dew, are the groins of the braes that the brook treads through. Wiry heathpacks, flitches of fern, and the bead-bonny ash that sits over the burn. What would the world be once bereft of wet and of wildness? Let them be left. Oh, let them be left, wildness and wet. Long live the weeds and the wilderness yet. Now there was a poem from Hopkins on a day off. Here is one about his work, one of his best-liked poems, Felix Randall.